and welcome to another one of Mark's Whiskey Ramblings. Today we will be talking about a blend, a rather famous blend, the Black and White. It is produced, or it was created, I should say, by James Buchanan, a whiskey entrepreneur from Glasgow at the end of the 19th century, uh, just before the, uh, the Patterson crash, in fact. And it was originally created as a, a whiskey for the politicians. It was called the House of Commons Whiskey. But those politicians they simply asked for their black and white because even then, uh, before the dogs, the famous dogs were depicted on the label, it was served in a black bottle with a white label. But the politicians didn't ask for, let me have one of those common house whiskies, please, uh, house of common whiskies, I should say. No, they asked for the black and white. And Buchanan started thinking, hmm, I should do something with that. And apparently in 1890 or around that time, he visited a dog show. He saw two beautiful dogs, a black Scottish Terrier and a white West Highland Terrier. And that's, he had an epiphany. And he said, that's what I'm going to call my, my, my whiskey. I will call it black and white. After all, that's what the people are asking for. And I'll put my beloved dogs on there. Bobby and Fanny, in fact. And since then, the dogs are uh, depicted on the bottle and the name was changed to black and white. Now I'm not sure what the composition of this blend is. It is, I do know this, uh, a, com a mix of uh, single malts, probably young single malts, and then a lot of uh, quality grain whiskey. Um, what I do know is that this is a bottle from the uh, uh, 1990s, so 100 years after its conception, let me put it that way. So it's an older bottling, you can still find black and white, and to be honest, it is dirt cheap. But this is a, a bottle that, well, almost 20 years old, around 20 years old. Anyway, rather young, uh, I presume, and uh, James Buchanan no longer exists, although it's still depicted on the label. Uh, the, after some, some mergers and acquisitions, etc., etc., the brand is now owned and marketed by that big, big drinks consortium known as Diageo. All right, black and white, it is a blend and it is bottled at 40% ABV and that's what we will be trying today. A nice golden color and I presume not too much coloring has been added. After all, it is bottled in a dark bottle, uh, which usually is an indication we don't need to color our whiskey. Um, it does not really cling to the glass. It comes down immediately, revealing what I presume will be a rather light body. But first, on the nose. Yes, indeed, very light. Citrusy notes. I get a bit of toffee, that's probably the grain speaking. Some apples. But the dominant notes here are clearly, clearly lemon and, and maybe some lime, but well, citrusy. Not much else is going on, actually. Maybe a slight nuttiness, but not really. Light and harmless. Oh, well, that was, uh, truth be told, to be expected, right? On the palate then. Mmm. It's got a very light body, very straightforward, easy going, rather simple, but then again, that's what this blend aims for. It's for the simple palate, let's be honest. This does not aim for complexity, uh, the fact that it is that it is um, uh, a blend usually indicates it's a young whiskey, so young whiskies don't really get that complexity because they haven't been touched by wood all that long. I presume the whiskey in here is between six and nine years old at the most. I do get a bit creaminess though, some some milk chocolate, some banana, uh, and there's even oh lo and behold, there's even a hint of peat all the way in the back. That's probably. Uh, Diageo, well, must be Khalil, I presume. But you do get that nice uh, hint of peat, although it is all the way in the back. This is by no means a peaty whiskey, far from it. Mm. And there's this little, little mintiness in there, giving it a fresh touch. The finish, well, it is very short. And in that finish, I do get a bit of some, some like some green tea or something like that. Well, 
in in the uh, in the 007 novel Moonraker by Ian Fleming, you can read about James Bond ordering a, a a black and white. He's sipping a black and white blended scotch in that novel, but it never made it into the film. Uh, this is really a rather overlooked um, blend, I should say, and it's in the same category as, let's say, William Lawson's Bell's Famous Grouse, even. But in my opinion, I have to be honest, um, I quite like this. Maybe it's because it's an older bottling, perhaps the newest ones are not as good as this one, but this is rather, even though it is light, I do quite like it, it is quite refreshing, it is a very easy going dram, and this is the type of whiskey, the type of blend, that you will gladly sip uh, on, on a terrace while the kids are playing football in the garden, simply lay back and enjoy a bit of sunshine on your face and enjoy an easy sipping uh, black and white, and that's exactly what this is. And that, my friends, is all for this Whiskey Rambling. I hope to see you again at one of Mark's Whiskey Ramblings real soon. And until then, may the malt be with you. Bye-bye.